Welcome to the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report, the only show that provides you with the best insight and information to everything Franklin County sports. And now here's your host, Bobby C. Hello and welcome to the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. I'm Bobby C. Want to welcome you here today. Want to say a big thank you to our underwriters here today, the Four Leaf Clover Restaurant in Berniston. Also by our friends over at Denny's Pantry, Berniston Road in Greenfield. Lisa Alber of Alber Hearing Services, 33 Waddell Street in Greenfield. And by our friends over at Hubie's, Hubie's Tavern and Restaurant Avenue A in Turner's Falls. We're on the FCAT, we're also on MCTV, and we can't forget our friends down at our good old studios. Oh, that's these guys. That's right, GCTV with Philippe Simone and John Meisner. Yes, we're so glad that you're here today for another week of the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. Yes, another light week because Mother Nature just loves dumping wet moisture all over Franklin County. And I got to tell you, I'm at a point now where I have four swim trunks because I have to have one for every other day. You know what I'm saying? It seems like every other day, it ends up raining outside. And what am I getting at? Well, I could swim in my backyard. I don't need to go to the ocean these days. Everything is all in the backyard for us. And we want to get things started here by starting with last week. Where last week we ended up having a fun time over in Turner's Falls. That's right. Turner's Falls Baseball. You know, what it really comes down to with this team is, is they have been having problems with one-run games throughout the year. You know, think about this. They had, this past week, everything that they had going on, going into today, us talking today, five one-run games. And another one-run game was last week when they ended up pulling off a 2-1 victory over Hampshire. It was a nice win for them in the Hampshire League against Belchertown, 2-1. to one. It all happened in the eighth inning for them. Hampshire League battle that turned out to be very important for this Turner's Falls team. And by the way, we're going to tell you right now that their main pitcher, Jake Dodge, has been able to do things that no other pitcher on this team has been able to do, and that is show consistency. And it's very important, especially as we start getting into the second half of the season, how important consistency really is. Well, he ended up doing what he needed to do to be able to help his team. He not only helped them out by being able to do well in the pitching department, but he also did well in the fact that he was able to um, do well with the offense, too. So a nice job done by Jakey Dodge. His brother came in in the eighth inning to be able to close down Belchertown to pick up that 2-1 win. It's a tough one, according to Coach Minkler. He said winning the entire game, and all of a sudden, both teams doing well on the defensive end. They were able to get closer, ended up getting so close they had to go into an extra frame, and Turner's pulls off the 2-1 victory. Well, Greenfield and Frontier, they battled it out last week as well. That happened last week in a game that turned out to be a really good one for Frontier as they were able to win 3-2. Dylan Appenel, he was the guy, man, threw a gem. How about this? 14 strikeouts for Dylan Appenel in this one. He also had only let up three hits, a couple of walks, solid game for this young man. And I'll tell you, a couple of guys who got hits for Greenfield were Joel Peabody, Ryan Cody. I can tell you that Hildreth, he ended up doing okay. He ended up getting a couple of hits in this one for Frontier as well. And Devlin. He ended up doing well on the mound for Greenfield. He ended up striking out seven. He walked three in seven innings. A very solid performance done by Kyle Devlin in this one as well. But they came up on the short end as Frontier picked up the 3-2 win over Greenfield last week. Well, Mohawk took on Pioneer last week, and this is what killed Pioneer. They were up throughout the whole game. They let up six runs in the fifth inning. They end up losing this one 6-4. to four. Ah, tough loss right there for Pioneer. Guys that were able to hit for this uh, Mohawk team to really keep things going were Aiden Drury, also Will Guyette, Cam Lacoco, also Tyler Dubriel, and Jackson Hicks. Anthony Moffitt and Jordan Grenier also had hits in this one. For Pioneer, Sam Glazier, also Nate Musso, and Jason Quinn all had hits as well for 
this Pioneer team, and they were also led by Jack Loud, who ended up with two hits in the Pioneer attack. I can tell you that Jared Hubbard ended up taking the loss in four innings of work for the Panthers. Well, the Franklin County Tech School needed a win, and they needed it bad, and they got one over Cy Tech last week. Final score was 15-4. to You know, after losing four games in a row, it was a win that this team really needed, and they are now at 500 on the season. They piled up 10 hits in the victory as well. They had three hits from Mike Patnode. He tripled, drove in four runs on the day. Nate Pelletier and Garrett Cole, they each had two hits and three RBIs. Also, Jared Velmedi Pru uh, uh, Prusi ends up with a double, drove in a run. Max Lay had two RBIs. Sim Minietti ended up with a hit and an RBI as well. Well, according to their coach, Dan Presley said, hey, we're in the right direction. But I'll tell you, we still got a ways to go. This team is a good, they really are too. They're a good team. They just need to start getting it together. Max Lay, well, he put them on their back and he did well. How about this? He pitched all seven innings to give his team the victory. Final score, 15 to four, Tech over Cy Tech. Well, last week, there was some good old track and field action that happened, which is finally good to see especially with the weather that we've had, where Mahar ended up setting a pair of records and they claimed a victory. It was their first league meet of the season as they beat Mohawk. Final score was 109-36. to The victory now leaves Mahar and Pioneer as the only unbeaten teams so far in interleague play. We could tell you that uh, senior Lily uh, Wickland Shearer was a bright spot for Mohawk winning both the 100 and the 400 meter hurdles with times of 17.6 seconds and 79.5 seconds, respectfully. Also, Pioneer ended up knocking off Greenfield 79.65. Haley Ring, she won two events for the visiting Pioneer Panthers who swept all the points in the 200 and the 400 meter, went on for a nice win in girls track and field. Ring paced the Panthers with victories in the 200 with a time of 30.7 seconds. Also the triple jump at 28 feet, two and a half inches. Sophia Walker provided a nice bump with a nice win in the 400 with a time of 72.1. Also Pioneer also swept the four, uh, four times 100 at a time of 59 seconds. Also the four times uh, 400 relays where they had a time of five minutes and seven seconds, Sydney Unitas bested the field in the pole vault, clearing 6-6. Greenfield also won 11 of the 17 events that were contested, including five of seven in the field. But Pioneer scooped up some big points, and that's why they were able to win. I can tell you that Victoria Moran has had a great year so far for Greenfield. She was the top scorer for the Wave. How about winning four events? Another dominating performance by her. She crossed first in the 100 hurdles with a time of 17.1, 400 hurdles at 75 seconds, while adding wins in the long jump at 5.9 and a half and the high jump at 5.0. So five feet straight up for that. And also a couple of other girls who were able to do well included Lulu, who ended up with a nice job in the mile, five minutes and 45 seconds, two mile at 12 minutes and 57 seven seconds, and also Casia uh, Kinsmith ended up with victories in the 100 with a time of 14.3, and the javelin at 97 and two inches, 97 feet, two inches. So there you go. Pioneer with a win over Greenfield in girls track and field last week. Well, in softball, it was Commerce beating the Franklin County Tech School. Host Commerce came up with 10 runs in the first inning, but the Tech School started to climb back. But it wasn't enough. Eight walks in the first inning led to 10 Commerce runs, and they were leading early in this one final. Ended up again being 13-10 when they already were spotted. 10 points early by the Franklin County Tech Lady Eagles. So it turned out to be a tough loss for them. But Abby Corey, she struck out six, walked three in six strong innings in relief. So she came in and was able to really shut the other team down after they already registered that many runs. 
Also, we can tell you that a couple of girls who did well in this one are Kirk Alonis, also Renee Reed. They had good days, as well as Mackenzie Martell, and even Genesis Courier and Bree Schneider all had hits for the Franklin County Tech. And they also were able to get a triple play in that game as well. Well, in boys tennis, it was Turner's Falls taking on Sabas. Brian Poirier continued his winning ways as he won 6-1-6 love. Also, Will Turn, he ends up winning 6-love-6-love. Six six love. And Brody Trott ends up winning 6-1-6 love. Also, the doubles team of Joseph Koshin and Mike Boyle end up winning 6-2-6-1. Six, six, and also, Corin Wisniewski and Miles Keith end up winning 6-1-6-4. Six, six, Turner's. As of last week, when we talk about this particular match, 9-0. and all. What a nice start for this team. Well, last week, Frontier had a chance to take on another really decent team, and they end up with a nice win over Hampshire Regional. Final score was 2 to nothing, And not a bad debut for a guy who hasn't pitched in Kalen Evans. That's right. He earned his first start of the year, delivering in convincing fashion as the right-hander struck out seven, didn't walk a batter. He also scattered only two singles in seven innings as Frontier picked up that win, 2 nothing. Other guys who had hits in this one included Brian Bauman. He also did well in that game. Offense was hard to come by for both teams, but Frontier was limited to just a pair of hits, and that's all Hampshire ended up with as well. But hey, all that matters is the score at the end of the day where Frontier wins 2-0. Well, Hoosick Valley, they end up beating Mohawk in baseball. Final score in eight innings was 8-7. You know, the Warriors ended up leading in this one 7-6, going into the bottom of the seventh. And all of a sudden, it was a huge home run by John Kroll from Hoosick Valley, who ended up tying the game and made it 7-7, and then they ended up scoring on another run, and they win it in eight innings, as a walk-off was all it took to pick up the win. Tyler Dubriel ends up with three hits for Mohawk. They're 1-7 as of this game of last week, uh, but, you know, they did the best they could, didn't they? And Anthony Moffitt and also Jordan Grenier each had hits and RBIs for Mohawk. Also in girls softball last week, it was Turner's Falls taking on Mohawk. Katie Reynolds, well, she hit her solo home run in the sixth inning, and it was a biggie because it helped her team out as they end up winning in Turner's Falls. Cassidy Wozniak ended up with three hits to pace the Turner's Falls Thunder. Also, Allie Murphy, Olivia Whittier had two hits apiece. You know, they ended up with 12 hits on 12 runs, a very successful day for the Lady Thunder. Also, Whittier drove in some runs. Wozniak, Murphy, and Juliana Road each had RBIs as well. Mohawk, well, they were led by Caitlin Johnston, also Isis Moon, and Ashley Reynolds. They had hits in that one for the Warriors. Well, the Frontier girls continue their winning ways. They beat Pioneer. Final score was 7-2 in girls softball last week as Olivia Dean, the sophomore, turned in another nice performance in the circle as she has been doing very well this season. And what she also has done is she's also been able to hit the ball, too. Well, she struck out eight. She walked two, didn't allow a run until the bottom of the seventh inning. As she got the complete game victory, she threw 117 pitches, and 78 of those were for strikes. So she really was pounding inside of that strike zone. Also, we could say that Denkowitz ended up with a couple of doubles. Also, Lily Spencer, she ended up with two hits to pace the Hawks, who are now 7-2 and two as of last week in this game that we're talking about. Pioneer, they were led by Olivia Rowe. She ended up doing okay. How about Scoble? She was in the circle for Pioneer. That's right. Steph Scoble ends up with 11 batters that she struck out in the complete game outing for the Panthers. And I got to say that Steph Scoble, Annie Johnson, yes, they had hits as well for Pioneer in the loss. Once again, Frontier wins last week, 7-2. to two. Well, it was some boys track and field that went on. And I can tell you 
that it ended up being a nice win for Frontier as they won big over Mahar. Final score was 104 to 41. Nice, easy win for them. I can tell you that uh, Phelan Koski, really talented kid, he took the 100 meter dash with a time of 11.8 seconds, won the triple jump. 38 feet, 10 inches. Also, the 400 hurdles does that in 61 seconds. Also, Alex Sharp, he ends up winning the two-mile with a time of 11 minutes and four seconds. Also, he wins the one-mile with a time of four minutes and 57 seconds. Jack Facilio, he ended up besting the field in the pole vault as he posted a top clearance of 10 feet, six inches, for the Red Hawks. Now, Jockey Frong, the big guy, he ends up doing well with the discus. How about 97 feet, seven inches? Also, Jake Matson, he did well in the shot put. Another one of their big guys, he ends up throwing for 33 feet and nine inches. So a nice job done by Frontier with the win over Mahar. Well, Greenfield, they ended up taking on Pioneer, and they end up winning big, 114 to 31. Pioneer did, though, beat Athol 83-54 in a tri-meet that they ended up having last week. Very dominating day for the Green Wave. Crescens ended up leading the way for them. He had the top uh, time with the 100 meters of 11 seconds. Also the 200 meters with a time of 23.3 seconds. Long jump, 19 feet, four and a half inches. He is surely a great talent. Greenfield right now, as of last week's match with these guys, is three and one on the season. They picked up field wins as Jake Cody ends up winning the discus, 84 feet, three inches. Also, Isaac Sagan ends up doing well in the shot put at 36 feet, uh, two and a half inches. Also, Emmanuel ends up with do a nice throw in the javelin of 149 feet, six inches. Good old Teddy Pop. He's been around a while. His torrid start of the season in the pole vault. Well, the guy has just been ripping it up, man. The freshman cleared 13 feet even, rolling past the field easily. He also had wins in the 110 hurdles with a time of 17 seconds. He surely is a great talent there, Mr. Teddy Pop from the Green Wave. And Pioneer Scott McDonough. What more can anyone say about him? He ended up doing well in this one. He ends up winning the long jump. He had a leap of 18 feet, two and a half inches to go with a leap of 40 feet, two and a half inches in the triple jump. He also took first place in the 100 meters um, with a time of 11.6 seconds. Gavin Curtis ends up winning the 400 with a time of one minute for Pioneer. He also did well in the pole vault with 10 feet. So there you have it. Those were the winners in that tri-meet between Greenfield, Athol, and Pioneer. Well, in girls tennis, it was a tough one. It came down to the final match, and the Wave ended up losing to Sabas. Final was three to two. Greenfield ended up losing their first game of the, their first match of the season with losing to Sabas, and it all came down to one important match on who was gonna end up walking away with the win. Well, we can tell you right now that the team of Dina Samaki and also Eva pruitt Dahl, they overcame a 4 nothing deficit, and they ended up coming back to be able to win a very important point that they needed in that. So a nice job done by them. You know, you really think about what Greenfield's been able to do this year. They're having a very strong start. And their coach, I think Alexis Silk must be very pleased with the way they're playing. She says what we like is that these kids have worked very, very hard throughout the year, and their record is surely showing that. Frontier, they end up beating St. Mary's 3-2. to two. Despite running out of their lineup, they uh, literally had to win some very important matches for them to be able to walk away with a victory. Well, their two top singles guy, uh, ladies were able to get it done for them. And a congratulations goes out to Tori Speth and also to Mary Lawrence. They had victories that helped them pick up the win. Also, they had a win in doubles that was able to give them the victory they needed from Patton and also Sullivan. So a nice job by Frontier. Well, Pioneer Valley Christian, they knocked off Turner's Falls in girls' tennis. Final was 5-0. In boys' tennis, it was Turner's Falls beating Westfield. Final was 3-2. to two. 
you know, this team is on fire right now. So that would bring them up to 10 and 0 on the year as of this particular match. Will Turn ends up with a nice win, 6-1-6 love. The other wins came on the court of first doubles where Joe Koshin and Josh Gollin end up winning 6-2, 6-1. And there was also a forfeit that Westfield had to give up on their second doubles, but turned out to be a nice win for Turner's Falls. Well, last week, it was baseball as Pioneer Valley managed to one hit a team on Friday, and that was an upset win over Hopkins Academy. As Musso ends up with a complete game gem, Nate ends up getting it done for his team. He scattered just seven hits over seven innings, struck out just one, but most importantly, he was throwing strikes throughout the day, and that was the difference. That's right, the senior did not walk a batter in throwing his complete game with just 72 pitches. It was nice because he also had a strong defensive effort from his team as well. According to their coach, Jordan Branson, he said, quote, Nate had a great day. He threw strikes all game. And yes, they were able to help him out on the defensive end. Pioneer, a nice needed win for them. They go over 500 as of that win over Hopkins. So they end up at that time at six and five. Nice job right there by those guys to be able to get it done. Congratulations goes out to them. You know, Jacob Quinn got the lone hit of the day for Pioneer. That's it. It was that one of those types of games. Like I said, it was that close, too, as Pioneer pulled off the win. One kid that I can say that's been able to hit the ball well for this Hopkins team is a guy by the name of Liam Higgins. Him and Noah Scanlon-Dean each had two hits apiece for Hopkins. Well, Turner's Falls, they end up beating Pioneer a very rainy day on Friday night. Oh, I know all about it because I was there. And let me tell you, it was awful. We're talking rain, dreary, cold. It was just a tough night to be able to play any kind of game with a ball, especially when you're trying to pitch it. But Jay Tyler, she tossed a gem. How about this, folks? She pitched a perfect game. That's right, a perfect game for Jade Tyler. What a solid performance that she ended up having. Not only that, but her team did it too. How about Taylor Murphy, Allie Murphy, Lexi Lacey? They all had a couple of hits apiece. Allie Murphy ended up doubling twice. Livia Whittier, Juliana Road, Haley Bogus, they had hits as well. Just a solid performance done by them. Tell ya, Scoville was the one who was in the circle, and she did throw the ball pretty well. There was times where she didn't, but there was also some errors and some things that didn't work out well for Pioneer in this one. And like I said, a perfect game. Yep, no hit shutout for Jade Tyler. She did not even walk any batters. Solid performance for her. One of the best pitchers in all of Western Mass. Well, there was a boys track and field match that took place on Friday between Mohawk and the Franco County Tech School. Wins from Cullen Brown. Yep, they overcame the weather. It was not a fun one. Brown ended up taking first place in the triple jump, measuring a leap of 37 feet, eight and a quarter inches. He also won the high jump at five feet, two inches. Also crossed the line first in the 400 meter hurdles with a time of one minute and three seconds. Brown also had a leg. Hey, man, he's one of those legs of the 4x400. Four well, ended up helping his team out as they end up winning as well with a time of 3 minutes and 51 seconds. London Summers, he was a double winner for the Warriors as well. He won the javelin with a throw of 127 feet 7 inches, 200 meters, also with a time, with a, uh, time of 24.4 seconds. Dennis Simmons was the winner in the mile with a time of five minutes and four seconds. Also, Bennett Besias ends up taking the 400 with a time of 54.8 seconds. Also in there, Quentin Romer, he claimed the 800 with a time of two minutes and 25 seconds. 
Mason Bonaggi, he ends up with a discus throw of 88 feet. Oscar Casson ends up rounding out Mohawk's winners on the day. He wins the long jump. He had a nice jump of 16 feet, 11 and three quarter inches. The Franklin County Tech, they haven't won yet this year, but they did have a nice win from Dante Rosewarm, won the 100 with a time of 12.2 seconds. Zachary Conway, the 110 hurdles. He had a time of 18.5 seconds. Kai Rodriguez ends up victorious in the shot put with a throw of 36 feet, seven and a quarter inches. Also teammate Justin DeBias, he ends up topping the field in the pole vault at eight feet. So, Mohawk with the win over the Tech School in track and field last week, 98 to 41. Want to welcome you to the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. I'm Bobby C. Want to welcome you here today. You know, Mother Nature has really put a damper on things for us this year. And it's been awful because we have not had as many events and as many matches and as many games as we normally do. We're down on tennis matches, we're down on track and field matches, we're down on games that have been rained out. It's just been really a sad situation for us to have to deal with what has happened weather-wise over the past month. Here's a stat for you. Did you know that it rained 21 days out of 30 in the month of April here in Franklin County? 21 out of 30. I guess we could have brought back a swim team and we could have had them in towns that don't have a swim team. The only one that has a swim team around here is Turner's, but with all the lakes we've had in every other town in everybody's backyard, we could have probably put together a spring sports program of, yes, outdoor swimming. Now that would be a lot of fun now, wouldn't it? Want to say a big thank you to our underwriters here today, the Four Leaf Clover Restaurant in Burniston, also by our friends at Denny's Pantry, Burniston Road in Greenfield, Lisa Albert of Albert Hearing Services, 33 Bedell Street in Greenfield, and by Hubie's Tavern and Restaurant, Avenue A in Turner's Falls. Thank you to our producers, Philippe Simone, and also to John Meisner. They've done a wonderful job to be able to keep us going week after week. We're here on GCTV. We're also on the FCAT over in South Deerfield and on Montague Community Television in Turner's Falls. Well, as we continue on with some softball that happened last week, uh, it was really a game that just showed up and got into my lap yesterday. That's right, as Greenfield ends up winning with a solid performance over Frontier, they end up winning 14-5. to Sam Smith, Reagan Hickey, also Audrey Brusciano, they each went deep for the wave, 6-1 and one on the season. Their only lone loss is to Hampshire Regional. Greenfield scored five times in the first inning. They led 10-0 going into the bottom of the third and picked up the easy win. You know, Smith, she ended up doubling twice, finished with four hits, also had five RBIs in the win. Hickey ends up with three hits and two RBIs. Audrey Brusciano ends up with two hits and two RBIs. Rachel Dodge, also Raquel Provost and Gianna Conti, they each had two hits with Conti doubling on one of those. Also, Olivia Joy, she struck out nine, walked four. She let up ten hits in seven innings, but they picked up the victory. Olivia Dean, the sophomore, well, she struck out one. She allowed one walk, but she did let up 17 hits against the Wave. Charlotte Doulet ends up with a double. She drove in a run for Frontier. You know, Frontier is still sitting at 8-3 and three on the year. Greenfield, look at their record, 6-1. and one, Goes to show you how many times they have been rained out this season. Also, Olivia Dean helped her own cause, ends up with two hits and two RBIs. Lily Spencer ends up with three hits in an RBI. And Olivia Vasilio ends up with two hits in the loss for Frontier. Well, Mohawk took it on the chin, a tough loss for them against Mahar, as a girl by the name of Skylar Dodge ends up hitting a huge walk-off two-run bomb in the bottom of the seventh inning after a tied 7-7 game and Mahar picked up the victory. It was a tough one for definitely the Lady Warriors. Grace Ward ends up singling and drove in a run for Mohawk. Reagan Dupree ends up with three hits, including a double. She also had an RBI. Morgan Rus uh, Ruscio ends up with two hits and an RBI. Caitlin Johnston, Maya Lashure, and also Nola Bloomer, they all had a hit 
and an RBI in the loss for Mohawk. LeShare ends up going in, the, in that one. She ends up striking out one. She also walked one. It was a tough loss for them. They get beat once again on a walk-off, 9-7 against Mahar. Well, it was an easy Athol victory over Pioneer yesterday. They end up winning 10-0 as Lindsay LeBlanc end up striking out nine in the complete game shutout as they picked up the victory. Want you to know the Skeff Steph Scoville in this one? She ended up striking out 12, but she also walked nine in this one. Scoville triple for Pioneer. Also, Taylor Sedlowski end up with a hit, but another loss for the Lady Panthers. Well, Smith Vocational, they beat the Franklin County Tech girls. Final score was 18 to three. We could say that Haley Jackman, she ended up tripling and drove in a couple of runs for the Eagles in the loss. Jocelyn Crowning Shield, as well as Shannon Kirkalonis, Emma Pollen, they ended up having a hit. Abby Corey, she struck out two and walked 12 in three innings in the loss. In track and field, there was a nice win for the Greenfield boys. They end up knocking off Marhar. Final score was 90 to 55. Crescents and Teddy Pop, they each won two big events for the Green Wave as they cruised to an easy victory. Crescents ends up winning the 100-meter dash with a time of 11.4 seconds, wins the 200 in a time of 23.5 seconds. He was also part of Greenfield's 4x100 relay team, and yes, they ended up winning that with a time of 48.2 seconds. Teddy Pop was also a part of that as well. He ended up winning the 100 high hurdles with a time of 16.4 seconds and the pole vault with a nice one at 13.6. That's not bad. 13 feet 6 inches is pretty, pretty good. Aaron Dew ended up winning the 800 with a time of 2 minutes and 18 seconds. Also, Jackson Brown ends up winning the triple jump. He ends up with 39 feet 3 and a quarter inches. Also, Israel, Colorado, ends up winning the high jump at 5 feet 2 inches. Greenfield also had a pair of throwing events that were won by Emmanuel. He won the javelin with a nice throw of 155 feet 2 inches. And Bailey Seminelli ends up winning the shot put. He ended up with a time, I mean, a throw of 35 feet 11 and a half inches. So there you have it. Greenfield continuing their winning ways in track and field. Well, the Franklin County Tech School knocked off Athol in track and field 80 to 59. Ryan Duclos ends up sweeping the three throwing events for the Franklin County Tech School. This kid is very, very strong. Very humble young man, too. He ends up winning the shot put with a throw of 40.1 and a half sec, uh, feet, uh, inches that is, sorry, 40 feet, one and a half inches. The discus, 92 feet, five inches. The javelin, 123 feet, nine inches. Justin DeBias ends up winning the high jump, five feet, two inches. Also wins the pole vault at eight feet. Dante Rosewarn, he wins the 100-meter dash and the 200-meter dash. Also, Zach Conway added a win in the 400 hurdles with a time of one minute, six seconds, and a nice job right there by the Tech School. Well, there was a tennis match between Greenfield and the Pioneer Valley Christian School, and it was a win for the boys' tennis team. So a nice job for them. Congratulations goes out to them. They are looking for a nice win that they needed for the victory, and they got it against the Pioneer Valley Christian School. In girls' tennis, it was Palmer beating Mohawk girls. Final was 4-1. to one. Also, in girls' tennis, it was St. Mary's beating Turner's Falls 4-1. to one. You know, I can say this, that there was a great little ball game that was played and I will say it was a lot of fun to be able to be a part of. And that game was last night between Turner's Falls and Hopkins. I was there. It was one of those games where someone really special in my life was able to have the game of his career. And that is my nephew, Ryan Campbell. Ryan ends up with three hits on the day for the Thunder. He ends up robbing a two-run homer and literally flipped over the fence 
with the ball in the glove. He also made a diving layout catch for another Rob in the day. This guy right here was on fire. He also had three stolen bases. He scored three times. Ryan Campbell ends up having the game of his career in the 4-1 win over Hopkins Academy, a win that automatically now puts Turner's Falls into the playoffs. They play a Division III schedule, but they're a Division IV school. They only have six games that are in their division that they play during the season. All you have to do is win three of six, and you're automatically in. It's called the Sullivan System. Well, they did. They beat Hopkins Academy one of those six games that they had to win, and they did that last night, and they've won their three. They are in the playoffs, guaranteed this season. Nice job, though. Jake Dodge, he pitched the gem. Did an awesome job for Turner's Falls in this one. Big congratulations goes out to Jakey on a really solid performance. The sophomore ended up striking out five. He allowed three walks. He did allow six hits, though, but really he had one inning that was really a little bit tough for him, but the two innings that were the most important were the sixth and the seventh, and he was able to knock down the Hopkins team and keep them off the base pass to pick up that 4-1 victory. Another guy who had a great game at the plate was Jaden Whiting. He also was able to steal a couple of bases as well. Solid performance from him. So really, if you think about the way that Turner's Falls played in this one, turned out to be a very successful victory. And congratulations goes out to the Thunder with that win over Hopkins. Well, Greenfield picked up a needed victory they needed. They ended up knocking off Belchertown. Final score in this one was 4-1. to one. A solid performance from Joel Peabody. He ended up on the mound. He had some timely hits that were able to help out as well. You know, David Carey helped out the pitcher with some great defensive plays. Even his coach, Coach Shusnick, said that Carey made some really great defensive plays that helped us in this one. Greenfield now two games over 500 at 6-4. and four. They came up with some timely hits in the fifth inning that was able to sort of pull them away. So it worked out well as guys were able to get it done. Hunter Campbell, also Owen Phelps, Ryan Cody. Those guys did well, including Carey, who also had a hit on the day. So the Green Wave picks up a win over Belchertown, 4-1. to one. Well... Franklin County Tech School, they needed a win, and they got it. They end up knocking off the Pioneer Valley Christian School, 14-3. Garrett Cole went 4-4 four for four with a triple and three RBIs. Yes, a solid performance for him. He also pitched those four innings that he ended up pitching in that night and ends up with eight strikeouts on the mound. They pick up the easy win that they needed in Tri-County Baseball. Max Arrest went three for three with a double, three RBIs in the win. Nate Pelletier, Mike Patnode, they each had a hit and two RBIs. Max Lay ended up with a hit and an RBI, and Nate Scandra ended up with two hits. So the Tech School picked up another victory. Well, East Hampton had no problem. They ended up knocking off Pioneer. They did it in easy fashion. Final score was 15 to nothing in five innings. Wow, what a solid performance. Only two hits on the day. That's all there were for this Pioneer team, and that was Jalen McGraw and Ryan Potter. Other than that, that was it. In this one, Jacob Hubbard struck out two in two innings to suffer the loss. So a tough one there by Pioneer. And finally, we got winning isn't always pretty, but it doesn't matter as long as as you can win. And the Warriors of Mohawk ended up getting four runs to cross the plate. That's all they needed. They picked up a 4-2 win over Smith Academy. The Warriors, a little bit of a struggle this year, but they're doing the best they can, and they ended up picking up their second victory. So there you have it. As you see, there's not a lot. We have so many rainouts, so many things that just have been getting in the way. And really, it's been a lady by the name of Mother Nature. She has been the problem of why a lot of these teams haven't been able to get these games in. You know what's going to happen over the next three weeks? You're going to start seeing teams that are going to have to play three or four games in one week. If you don't have enough pitching 
in softball or in baseball, it can be very tough for your teams. You know, the track and field kids, if they got to make up two matches in a week, that takes a lot out of those kids. You know, it's a lot of work. That's why, if you notice, a lot of these track and field matches are only once a week. You don't normally see two times in a week. It's a lot of work. And it's a lot of work for preparation to be able to set up those fields for all of these kids as well. So really what it comes down to is it comes down to Mother Nature, hopefully bringing the sunshine and the good weather so these kids can finish out the spring season. So that's it. I got a very short show for you this week, and I apologize. It's only because Mother Nature has been winning the battle between her and these athletes. Want to thank our friends again at the Four Leaf Clover Restaurant in Burniston. Also by our friends over at Denny's Pantry, Burniston Road in Greenfield. Lisa Albert of Albert Hearing Services, 33 Riddell Street in Greenfield. And by Sean Hubert of Hubie's Tavern and Restaurant Avenue A in Turner's Falls. For me, Bobby C., for my producers, John Meisner, and also Philippe Simone, want to thank you so much. Get out, support those athletes, and we'll do it again next week here on the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report. Have yourself a wonderful week, everyone. Thanks for watching the Franklin County Varsity Sports Report on GCTV. Catch a game, and be sure to join us next time for more sports and fun.